my name is George Fisher. I'm a pigeon fancier. I'm nearly 70 years old and I've had pigeons for quite a long time. Uh, really, I've had them continuously since 1974-75. Um, how I got introduced to pigeons, my uncles, my mother came from Bolden Colliery. Uh, my uncles had pigeons in, at Bolden Colliery and I was only about three or four years old when I was introduced to them. And something stuck, I just had an affinity for them. I really enjoyed them. I enjoyed being with them and I've always loved them. So as a, when I was younger, I did have pigeons in a small shed at home. Um, as I developed in my career as an apprentice electrician and work, I didn't have them until I got married which was around about 19, in the early 70s. And as I say, I, I first uh, started again in 1974, 75 at Burnhope. Then I flew there for 20 years and eventually I came uh, to fly it uh, in the Anfield Plane Club and I've had them ever since. So I've had them practically 40 years. Uh, it's a passion in a, in a hobby, I must admit. And um, it's very difficult to shake off. And it's something that I, I would hate to not have. Uh, it keeps me interested, gets me up in the morning. It's just 365 days a year job basically to look after them. I know uh, we've got to go on holiday and we do help each other out in that respect. Oh, pigeon fanciers, we always get somebody that's willing to, to look after them. My father was born and bred at Catchgate and um, he died quite a, quite a time ago and uh, I mean, like, I think it grows upon you. you. You grow up there. You've got an affinity for the for the whole place, like Catchgate, Anfield Plain, uh, and Stanley. And it's just the, the the people there are so friendly. And you know, you've got great memories and uh, of the area and, and, and great friends. And uh, it's just home to me. Even though I, I, I've been quite a few countries and you know, th uh, throughout the world and seeing things. And there's other lovely places to live, but this is always home for me. I had a career with the, uh, the National Coal Board until 1985. And uh, I, even though it was pretty hard work and quite onerous and, and difficult, uh, the, the NCB was really good to people like myself and apprentices and engineers who uh, wanted an education, there was nothing they wouldn't do to, uh, let the, to help the lads to be educated and give them a good trade. And when you look back at it, a lot of the things that we worked on in the pits at the time uh, was cutting edge to edge technology. Basically, people maybe thought it was a rough you know, pit, pit this and pit that, but in, in, as far as ele the, in the electrical and uh, technical side of it, it was uh, at the forefront of things that were happening. We, we were working with um, certain protective devices and things that were 20 and 30 years in front of uh, what was in general industry uh, and in domestic uh, uh, electrical installations so and it was a great variety of things to work on um, you know from high tension the motors and control circuits and telephones and communication system and it was a really really good apprenticeship and I kind of thank you know um, the NCB enough for you know giving us the opportunity and uh, helping us along in my career but I had good memories of it and you know there's a lot of camaraderie in the pits and he uh, uh, had good working relationships with a lot of people, so I can't, I can't knock that. But I, I enjoyed it. After that, I, uh, I, I left the uh, the coal board, as I say, in 1985. And in 1987, I started to work uh, for myself. Um, I set myself away in business, and I never regretted that. That was it was the best job I've ever had. I must admit it. It, um, <coughs> I was a like master of a more destiny and I enjoyed it. A lot of job satisfaction, met a, lot, me, um, met a lot of people, nice people and worked for a lot of good people in, the, in, the, in this locality and beyond. So it, it, it was what I really wanted in life and I thoroughly enjoyed that. 